It's so good to have you today as we open up to Hosea chapter 6. It's really a call to repentance. The, this book, Hosea, is not really just about Hosea and his wife, Gomer, and all of her unfaithfulness, but is, it is about God and us. It is really the redemptive story about God, about our unfaithfulness, but God's faithfulness. I'm so thankful we serve a faithful God. It says all of the promises in Christ are yes and amen. We can stand on those promises. We can be assured that whatever God has promised, He will do, as we talked about a couple days ago. So today, let's open the scripture together. Let's dig deep into the promises, and let's find out those biblical truths that can help us become more like Him. Thank you for joining me. Hosea chapter 6, verses 1 through 11. Come, let us return to the Lord. He has torn us to pieces, but He will heal us. He has injured us, but He will bind up our wounds. After two days He will revive us. On the third day He will restore us, that we may live in His presence. Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. As surely as the sun rises, He will appear. He will come to us like the winter rains, like the spring rains that water the earth. What can I do with you, Ephraim? What can I do with you, Judah? Your love is like the morning mist, like the early dew that disappears. Therefore I cut you in pieces with my prophets, I killed you with the words of my mouth. My judgments flashed like lightning upon you. For I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. Like Adam, they have broken the covenant. They were unfaithful to me there. Gilead is a city of wicked men, stained with footprints of blood. As martyrs lie in ambush for a man, so do bands of priests. They murder on the road to Shechem, committing shameful crimes. I have seen a horrible thing in the house of Israel. There Ephraim is given to prostitution, and Israel is defiled. Also for you, Judah, a harvest is appointed. We open this portion of Scripture in chapter 7 with another instruction from the Lord. We talked about listening and hearing, paying attention, and today this portion opens with, Come, let us return to the Lord. As you read throughout the Old Testament, you hear this phrase over and over again, Come and return to the Lord. Why is that? Well, it's because it's our nature to wander. And so the Lord is reminding us, come, return to the Lord. Aren't you glad He's asking? Aren't you thankful that we serve a Heavenly Father that constantly pursues us, that constantly desires for us to get close to Him, to have that intimate relationship? In verse 2, it says, After two days He will revive us. On the third day He will restore us, that we may live in His presence. Um, you know, throughout the Old Testament as well, we see so many references and uh, so much about Jesus throughout the Old Testament and all these prophecies that we have seen fulfilled and so many more being fulfilled as we look towards His second return. It says in verse 3, Let us acknowledge the Lord. Let us press on to acknowledge Him. You know, it is so good to know the Lord. The scripture says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Um, this last Sunday during our worship service, our, our worship leader just stopped and he talked about the goodness of God. He's a good, good father. I'm sure a lot of you are singing that song in your churches. And, and he was talking about the goodness of God. And he just said, you know, the presence of the Holy Spirit is here for us right now, just to experience. And I just felt when he said that, just a sweet touch of the Holy Spirit, just sweep over our congregation because we serve such a good God and He desires for us to draw near and to press in, to press in, to acknowledge Him. We talked a, a couple days ago about not forgetting the Lord, that He's our maker, and that when we forget that God is watching us, that means that we have forgotten God. 
But if we are the people that acknowledge God in our day to day and all that we do, and we press into him, then we will find such satisfaction. Think about the woman at the well. He says, I have water to give you that if you will drink, you will never thirst again. So as we acknowledge and we press into the things of the Lord, we will be satisfied. He's so worth it. I can say this is one pursuit worth having is the pursuit of God and the knowledge of him. Now it says here in verse four, he just tells them that their love is fleeting. Just as Gomer's love for Hosea was fleeting and she was inconsistent and unfaithful. He was saying that that's how their love is. Let's not have a love towards God that's fleeting like the morning dew, it's inconsistent. Let's have a loyal love, a faithful love. In verse five, he says, therefore I cut you in pieces with my prophets and I killed you with the words of my mouth. You know, the word of God breaks down to the deepest parts of our heart, to the very part, the very depths of our soul. Hebrews tells us that the word of God is quick. Think about that. The word of God is quick. It says he sent his word and healed them. Have you ever been healed of the Lord? He sent his word and he healed you. It says that his word is accurate. Do you need truth in your life? God's word is accurate. It's sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as able to judge. Now that's deep. That's the kind of deep relationship I want with God through his word. If you want to know how you're truly doing in your Christian walk, look at the scripture. What does the scripture say? How does the scripture, how do you filter your life through the word of God? If you're looking in a mirror, do you see Jesus? Do you see who he is? Do you see the character of God in you when you look in the mirror? That should be our goal, the standard. God's word is a high standard. And these people here, these Israelites, they did not want God's standard. They wanted their own standard. So look to the word. See, the word is a good schoolmaster. When my kids were in, in school, I would always tell them, I would rather discipline you than the school having to discipline you. I wanted my children to be on good behavior. I wanted them to have good behavior. I wanted them to have good character because I knew that if they had good character and they had the right discipline at home, that when they went to school, the teachers would not have to discipline them. And I'd always be so proud of them when they'd be citizens of the month and you know receive awards for character as much as good grades because I knew that they were receiving good training at home. You see, when we get disciplined from the Lord, it's because he loves us. And I would rather have his perfecting love than the kind of love that is not perfecting. He says, I desire mercy, not sacrifice, and acknowledgement of God rather than burnt offerings. The New American Standard says, I desire loyalty. You know, God desires loyalty, but he deserves loyalty. God is loyal to us, and we, he deserves our loyalty as well. Not some form of religion, not some form of legalism, but he deserves that kind of loyal love that seeks him and presses in, acknowledges him. The rest of these verses here in this portion are really about judgment. Let's look at these scriptures as we meditate on them and use them as a guide for us not to bring grief to God's heart, but to be the kind of children that bring joy to his heart, that bring pleasure to his heart as we serve him and make him the center of everything. Today, as we close in prayer, it's just my heart, on my heart, that we would just ask the Lord to help us to be loyal, to help us to be faithful, and to press in to know Him more. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you today in the precious name of Jesus. Lord, we call on you to help us to please you, to be loyal to you, to press in, Lord. We want to know your word more. We want to know truth, Lord. We want to see your reflection when we look in the mirror. And Lord, we want others to see Jesus in us. Help us, Lord. Keep us faithful to you. And Lord, we pray that in all things we will bring you glory. In Jesus' name, amen.
프로그램은 시청자 여러분의 소중한 후원으로 제작됩니다. <목소리>